And welcome to the webcast of Acelio. Uh, we have attendees from all over the world, so a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, today, Jonas Eklind, our CEO, will present the company and some of the recent progress, both on the commercial side and on the technical side. You have the possibility to ask questions. You will write your questions during the presentation in the webinar tool under questions. Uh, we will not handle the questions during the presentation, but after uh, Jonas' presentation, we will uh, raise those questions. Uh, the webinar will also be published afterwards uh, on our website under Insights and News. I will also send the link to the published presentation to all of you who are attending this webinar. So uh, with that, I want to hand over to Acelio CEO, Jonas Eklind, and enjoy the presentation. Hi, I'm Jonas Eklind, CEO Acelio. And Perhaps you saw our uh, press release this morning talking about the new possibilities where we also can charge the storage with electricity and the test we will conduct in, in Sweden and, and the verification project that we extend now to, to Sweden as well. And also the possibility that a new containerized solution gives with uh, bringing value out of the heat that's left after the conversion to electricity. Looking into the opportunity today of renewable energy, we have very low cost for re renewable energy, and we have a lot of it. The problem is to have the energy available when you want it. Uh, and the fossil fuel uh, success is actually connected to the fact that that's stored energy. You can get on-demand electricity from fossil fuels. And that's what's needed also for renewable, that you can get electricity when and where you want it. And that's the uh, Acelio game changer, that we now have the energy storage solution for re reliable electricity all hours of the day and to the right cost. We have built an energy storage so we can produce electricity around the clock, build a solution for distributed uh, baseload. And we can do that with a right cost per kilowatt hour, meaning a very low cost. And we can also build a scalable solution. Uh, so we can build it in microgrids and close to the consumer uh, and the, to the user of the electricity. Uh, where we can build cost-effective projects from 100 kilowatt and upwards. And our focus is from 100 kilowatt to 100 megawatt. The core technology to convert the stored energy to electricity is our Stirling engine. The, the Stirling engine itself, it's an old uh, invention uh, that we have developed and perfected over many years. Uh, the, our Sterling engine has actually been used for 2 million hours where we have industrialized, industrialized the solution. So it's now a fully industrialized Sterling engine that it can be used in these projects. The Sterling engine is used for, to convert heat into electricity. That's the core of, of, of the Sterling engine. What we now can uh, offer the market is the groundbreaking innovation where we can store uh, heat or thermal energy. So the thermal energy storage, TES, that's where we in high, at a high temperature store uh, energy. And we use a phase change material called PCM, which is a recycled aluminum alloy. Uh, and there we can store a lot of energy. Uh, in one module here, uh, we have for 13 hours of nominal power on each module, 13 kilowatt. So one container consists of uh, 52 kilowatt nominal power and storage uh, that's the same of about 700 kilowatt hours. The one big advantage of the PCM material we are using is that there is no degradation or any loss of, of uh, the medium. Uh, our solution is also strong protected by three-layer protection, where we, of course, have the IP 
both approved uh, patents and, and patent pendings. We have some parts of the system that's uh, protected by company secrets, and the software in the system is also a very important part to run it, and that's of course also well protected. The new solution that we uh, can combine thermal energy storage with electrical input as we charge the system with uh, electricity as well. Uh, that's the new solution where we can combine it with PV, with wind, and of course, any type of renewable electricity. We have previously worked with concentrated solar power, and that means that we take the thermal energy from the sun, uh, collect and concentrate that, and use that heat or the thermal energy to heat up our thermal energy storage. With a new system we, where we also have a powerful electrical heater, we can also connect this to a solar PV plant. Uh, we can use it for load shifting, we can use the overproduction in, in a, a larger plant, or we can, of course, build a specific plant of PV for uh, a 24-hour solution. Uh, in some areas of the world, CSP is the, the best choice, depending on the solar conditions. And in others, the, the PV solutions is the, best, uh, so, uh, is the best choice. You can also combine it with wind power, of course, because the, the, the storage is charged by from electricity converted into thermal energy storage. And as you see in the image here, we also have this contain containerized solution with four modules per container, meaning that we now have the uh, Stirling engines more uh, centralized or clusterized. And that gives the opportunity to also bring value out of the residual heat. Because when, they, when the engine produces electricity, the, 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 the product is electricity and heat, and that heat can we now use to bring into value. The ACL position is a large, we have a large untapped potential in the smaller and medium sized project where there is a need of multi hour storage. Uh, for large scale pr uh, projects for 100, 200, 300 megawatt utility scale plants, there are solutions on, with CSP tower and CSP trough that can store multi -hour, uh, uh, for, for multi-hour energy storage. And of course, if you have solar electricity with PV, you get very cheap PV midday when you have the sun, and you can combine it with batteries for some hours of storage. But a large untapped uh, market where you have between 100 kilowatt and 100 megawatt combined with uh, multi-hour storage, that's the Acelio segment, where we have uh, customers that have a, a local need in a microgrid or connected to an unstable grid or also in the grid environment. And that can be a, a, a local company or an off-grid hospital where we signed an agreement some, some days ago or it can be for a microgrid for, for some different households. Acelia is a Swedish company and a Swedish development, and we have our head office in Gothenburg with the test uh, development and manufacturing uh, sites in the west coast of Sweden. We also have sales and technology uh, offices in, in China and Morocco and in Spain. And today we are about 105 employees. We have worked with the Sterling Engine since 2008 and, and in several industrial projects where we have converted biogas into heat and used that heat to produce electricity. But we have also worked with CSP and solar uh, electricity since 2012, where we have installed test and verification projects in China, in uh, Dubai and in Morocco. And we have some research and, and uh, pilot uh, test installation as well. And since last summer, we also have a pilot installation with the thermal energy storage. We also have a strong partner network where Masen is our main partner as being a very important 
part of our verification project. Uh, Masen is also uh, is also on our board. Masen is the Moroccan Agency for Sustainable Energy, and they have the uh, responsibility to build 52% renewables in Morocco to 2030. We also work together with the Dubai Energy and Water Authority and the large product developer Mastar uh, that's based in uh, Abu Dhabi. And we have development uh, cooperation with KTH, Shalvers, and Khalifa University, and that's a part of Mastar. Last summer, we presented our thermal, uh, thermal energy storage in, in June last year. Uh, the next big step is our plan verification at the end of 2019, where we, together with Masen in Morocco, verify the system in a typical environment. In next year, we will have the first commercial installations. And later in 2020, we will also have the product verification project before we initiate the volume ramp up. And the volume ramp up is planned to start or the volume of manufacturing is planned to start in June 2021 in our factory in Uddevalla, Sweden. As I said, we successfully demonstrated our industrial demonstrator of the thermal energy storage last year in June. After doing that, we received a huge interest. Uh, we had requests from 52 countries to a total value of 5 billion euro. And we now work according to plan to convert this interest into commercial products. Also this year, we have received a lot of interest. Uh, we have been invited to the World Bank for their strategy conference. We have been invited to the World Bank and IFC to present our uh, thermal energy storage. We have signed MOUs and a uh, sale agency agreement. And we have also been uh, listed at the Mission Innovation at, as one of the top 100 technologies for avoid emission. Uh, I've also been awarded at Mission Innovation Champion uh, at the uh, ministerial meeting in Vancouver uh, some, week, some one week ago. Uh, and we also, as you saw in the press release this morning, initiated our cooperation with the Global Energy Center to also make a verification project here in Sweden. And, and this interest reflects the, the increased interest of energy storage and especially thermal energy storage. So uh, as the important tool to make the transition from uh, thermal to uh, transition from fossil to uh, renewable energy. And if you look at the benefits of a CLE solution and summarize them, the, the most important part is that the distributed and dispatchable renewable electricity for all hours a day. And it's a, a sustainable solution. And it's that it modular and cost competitive also for smaller installations, meaning that you can build it distributed close to the uh, to the user of the electricity and not dependent on the uh, on the national grid and you can build it in a microgrid environment and then there is zero emission and there is no need of process water and of course the most important part that this system efficiency is very high and that brings that you, it's a very low cost to be a dispatchable alternative and that's a summary of Acelio and the Acelio technology. And thank you very much for listening. And now into some questions. Okay, thank you, Jonas. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a couple of questions here. Um, can you elaborate a bit more of uh, what the broadened use of the storage uh, mean for Acelio's commercial journey? Yeah, it's of course important that we now can build a system that's even more perfect for the, for the environment of the customer. 
depending on what type of renewable energy they have uh, available. Mm -hmm. And also if you have CSP, that works very well, if you have the right solar conditions for CSP. But with PV, you can also do it in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And as having electricity as, as input as well, <laughs> then it's also a solution if in a more uh, mature markets, like in Sweden. Yeah. So talking about Sweden, the, uh, the uh, verification at Lava Test Center, what does that mean for the company to be able to, to test it also in Sweden? Uh, to, to verify our thermal energy storage, it's of course very important to do that in the, in the typical solar energy environment like in Morocco, but it's also value to do it with a multiple of renewable energy uh, sources that we can do at Glava, and also to do it closer to our development engineers mm. that are based in, in Ormol and, and, and Gothenburg. Okay, um, I think those are the questions, so thank you very much, and uh, thank you everyone who was listening. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we, we had a, a, a last question here, so uh, about the conversion uh, efficiency of the system. I know you touched upon it in the presentation, but can you say something more about that? If you if you calculate the efficiency from from input to output and and, and use all the the output of, uh, energy, then of course it is very very high. Uh, we haven't communicated the exact percentage, <laughs> but uh, if you calculate everything, it's uh, it's very very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If we have an additional question here, um, yeah. So we have a, a question here um, saying, considering losses and the cost of the system, how feasible is it? to use the storage system for long-term storage, six months plus. Yeah, you mean to, to store from one day to, or one week to the other, or one month to the other. Mm. Uh, technically, of course, that's that's possible, but uh, this utilization of the, of the system will not be that high. Mm. So it's really depending on, on the business model of the, of the, the customer or the alternative cost. But of course, if you store one day and then you save it there for one week, uh, the system will not do anything more than store. So it's not utilized uh, fully and, mm -hmm. and the cost will, of course, in the end be, be much higher. Yeah. But the alternative can perhaps be even higher. So. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, those were some of the questions. And as I said, we will publish the full presentation uh, under news and insights on the website. So thank you very much. Okay.